Hi guys, so I got back from my trip yesterday. This is post vacation Ollie here. So before I start this video, I just want to give you guys a little review of a product real quick, but it's a really, really good product that I have a lot of hope for and I genuinely would not be making this review if I didn't actually have a lot of hope for this product. And that product is the Quit Go Inhaler Cigarettes. It's basically an oxygen inhaler that looks like a cigarette, and when you take a drag off of it, it feels like, like you're smoking a cigarette. But of course, since it's simply an oxygen inhaler, it is completely harmless. It is a safer alternative to vaping, and it really does feel kind of like you're smoking a cigarette. It has that menthol nicotine taste to it. Now, personally, I don't smoke cigarettes habitually, like on a regular basis, but when I drink, I do tend to chain smoke. So when I took a drag off of this, I was like, it's, it's there because not only do you get like the flavor of the menthol, like this is, um, this is a mint flavor. I got two flavors. I got the mint flavor and I got the cinnamon flavor. The tip of it is like a rubber, type of thing that you can like chew on if you want to. And for me personally, I was on a Skype call and I was talking to my friend about this product and I realized that I kept wanting to take a drag off of it because it doesn't produce any smell. You also don't blow out any smoke. You just suck on it. And each one of these little things lasts up to four weeks. They have other flavors. They have, they have an oxygen flavor, so it's essentially plain. They have a mixed berry. They have a cinnamon, they have a mint. It's a little bit bigger than an actual cigarette. When you inhale it, it actually gives you the same kind of like itchiness, kind of nasal sensation when you, when you take a drag out of a cigarette. It gives you the kind of same calming relief effect that nicotine gives you as well. But of course, it's nicotine free, it's totally pure and natural stuff, and it is clinically proven to actually help people stop smoking. So if you are a smoker and you're looking to quit, I would highly recommend the Quick Go Smokeless Vaporless Inhaler. All right, so without further ado, here is my vlog from my trip to Iowa that I took um, last weekend, and I hope you enjoy. Hi, this weekend I'm going to attempt to vlog again. I've proved to never be that good at it, but I really wanna do it this time. If anything, I'll film something, something that I, you know, feel compelled to talk about, I might sit down and talk about it, or I might just vlog throughout the weekend. So what am I doing this weekend? I am going to Far East Iowa um, in a tiny house, like one of those tiny houses where it's just like a trailer basically, but like slightly nicer. And it's on a farm in the middle of nowhere. There's an outdoor toilet, no cell service. I'm just gonna just vibe for three days. Yeah, this weekend is mostly gonna consist of a lot of reading and writing and praying and some food prep because, you know, I thought about doing a fast, but like, I don't know if doing a fast would be the healthiest thing for me to do. I weigh 150 pounds. I like to do this every summer. I mean, I've only done it once before, but I'd like to make it like an every summer thing. I'm, these are the exact same dates that I went last summer. It was July 31st through August 3rd. And last time I um, made a video on my uh, psychedelic trip, I tripped shrooms and I talked about it. Um, I'm not gonna do anything psychedelic this time. I'm probably just gonna raw dog it and do it the whole thing sober. Um, because that way I get to do all of the spiritual work myself. And also I just haven't been able to acquire anything, so. Right now I'm at Starbucks in my town, and I'm gonna eat my Starbucks, and then I'm gonna head out. It's about, it's about a three hour drive, so it's about twice as long as, it's about twice as long of a drive as, uh, the last trip that I had. And yeah, so that's what I'm doing. I don't know what to expect. I don't know exactly how tiny the house is, um, but I'm excited. Every person that I've told about this vacation 
and what I'm doing has basically said, well, not every person, that's not true, but a few people have been like, that sounds like a terrible vacation to me, but you have fun. Yeah, I mean, I understand it. I understand why. I don't even like calling it a vacation because I'm not really, like, doing anything. Um, it's just kind of a, it's a seclusion trip is what it is. It's, you know, I'm not really there to, like, have a blast. <laughs> so, yeah, I'll get back to you probably when I'm there, or if anything interesting happens during the trip, I'll, during the trip there, and I'll let you know. But I'll probably talk to you in three hours. Okay, so I have just arrived at my destination. This is a very tiny house. Um, it's in a heavily uh, wooded area, which I, well, it's different than the last place in that it's sort of closed off by woods. There is a, well, I'll just, I'll just, uh, I'll give you a little tour of the place. I literally just got here. Um, kind of have to pee, so I'll be able to use their um, um, their outdoor bathroom. Well, guys, I've tried absolutely everything, and arguably the most important clip in the entire vlog will not go into iMovie. I can export it, and it just shows me a black screen with the audio, and that's it. So I cannot show, I, I even tried a screen recording in QuickTime and it just was too laggy and it was just frozen the entire time. So it, I, I am about, I am giving up. There's no way that I can show you the tour that I filmed. So I guess I'll just have to show you pictures and I guess you'll just have to get a feel for it in the video. Sorry guys, I'm, I'm pretty livid right now. So this was the front of the house where I entered. This is the side of the house. This is my view when I was walking towards it. This is the back porch of the house that's towards the pasture. This is where I would have my bonfire. This is where I would shower and go to the bathroom. This is the corner of the house where I would read. This is the gas stove that I would use to cook. This is the bed, although it did not look like that where I stayed there. And this is the gas stove, which I did not use. Good morning. Uh, it's about 10.30 a.m. And uh, last night I read the Bible read my book, went outside, walked around, and then came back in, read more of the Bible, prayed for like an hour, which is like a long time for me, and it was good. I'm actually like doing what I said I was going to do. Last time I had a trip like this, I didn't do as much reading, writing, and praying as I thought I would, but that's also because I wasn't as connected to my faith as I am now. So, oh, and also I went into town, um, got away, and I went to a restaurant, and, uh, I was going to go shopping, but then my phone was, like, almost dead, so I had to go back to my car, um, I look really weird in this lighting. I have absolutely no service here at all, which is what's kind of different from uh, about this trip than my last trip is that I had some service, uh, but this is like really I gotta go like into town if I want to have any service at all. Um, so today the plan is I'm gonna go grocery shopping, and other than that I have no plans. Um, I might do a bonfire tonight thought about doing one yesterday, but it was too late, it was too dark to see um, enough to make one. And right now, I'm going to try to, t um, I'm going to attempt to figure out that outdoor shower um, is just a bag of water. Hopefully I have enough. I'm realizing that this vlog is uh, kind of boring so far, because I don't have anything like super amazing and revolutionary to say. But if I do, I'll be sure to write it down. That's one thing I haven't done much, is I haven't done a ton of writing. Doesn't this kind of remind you of the movie Midsummer? I hope this is Midsummer. Okay, update. I just had a shower. 
I really like the outdoor shower. <laughs> I did not think that I would like it as much as I did, but first of all, there's something just like really beautiful about being totally naked and vulnerable outside in nature. And I kept thinking like, I kept thinking like, wow, this is how it was supposed to be. <laughs> Like, this is how it was supposed to be with Adam and Eve, and like, you know, pre-shame. Because I feel like I'm the only person in the world. And it's really nice for someone as introverted as me. So, I'm gonna get dressed, brush my teeth, and head out into town and get groceries, because I still don't have any food here. Alright, see you later. So I just got finished uh, shopping and uh, I'm really sweaty and tired right now because I brought all of my groceries in with a wheelbarrow and it's like kind of a long ways to go and it's hot and I'm feeling, I feel so alive. So it's like 4 o'clock right now and uh, I have no plans to leave my cabin for the rest of the day. Just gonna chill here. I'll do a grocery haul, why not? So first, let me turn you around and show you. Okay, so here are my not refrigerated groceries. I got marshmallows, graham crackers, and chocolate because I'd like to make s'mores, s'mores at some point. Um, cups, peanut butter, creamy chicken ramen, bread, pita chips, and Annie's mac and cheese. I got two gallons of water, and then for the cooler, because I don't have a fridge, I got some ice, um, eggs and bacon, because I'm ambitious and I'd like to make bacon and eggs for myself tomorrow morning on the pro propane stove, um, garlic and herbs dip, raspberry jam, raspberries, two water bottles. And, yeah, that's pretty much it. Hopefully, I think that should be enough to hold me over. I have, I have breakfast, <laughs> I'm thinking, bre yeah, I have breakfast, lunch, and dinner for tomorrow. I can make sandwiches, I can have snacks, I can do the, the mac and cheese for dinner. I don't need much. Um, maybe I'll go out for dinner tomorrow um, if I'm not feeling like just having ramen. I'll probably do that. <laughs> But yeah, now I officially have things to eat here besides chai, which is a really nice feeling um, because being stranded, well, I'm not stranded, I have my car, but being in a place where you're, you know, you feel very cut off from the world um, and not having any food is, makes it not as easy to be fully comfortable, if that makes sense. So now I feel a lot more cozy in this space. And I probably, like I said, won't leave this space for the rest of the day. And yeah, I'll talk to you guys later. And if I make a bonfire tonight, which I think I will, I will uh, be back with that. bunch of, I think, cows in the distance, just like grazing the road. Hey guys. I'm such a city boy. This is like really intense for me. Oh shit. Maybe if I was feeling more adventurous, I'd walk over there, but I honestly don't know if that's a good idea. Plus I'm hungry and I'm kind of wanting to make dinner right now. Okay, I'm gonna make a challenge to myself. I'm making dinner right now, or I'm waiting for water to boil. And I think tomorrow, I don't wanna leave this house at all. So starting now, um, because I just had to run to the uh, gas station and get a lighter for the uh, propane stove. And I also realized that I forgot milk and butter for the uh, mac and cheese. Um, 
I think tomorrow my goal is to just stay here. Um, and I am getting this on video so that I actually, like, have... Because it's hard to not go out, just like go out to eat i mean it's not like I'm, I'm in that much of a remote area no it's it's not like super extreme um like i'm still 15 minutes away from cafes and restaurants and all these other things but i don't want to be going out every day like that's kind of not the point of this so my car is not going to move from that spot until I check out at 11 a.m. on Monday. I think I, yeah, I, I can, I can do that. I have everything I need right here. Also, just to get a percep uh, perspective of how tiny this space is, okay, here, I'm sitting here. I'm, I'm sitting here. That's my bed, right there, okay? And then that's it. So, like, this is a very, very tiny space. Okay guys, so dinner is prepared. It's a lot more lunch-like than I normally um, am used to, but we have cream of chicken ramen, a PB&J, pita chips, garlic and herb spread, and raspberries. It ain't much, but it's honest work. Alright guys, it is now 8.30, dishes are done, um, sun's going down, I think now I'm going to try to start a fire and have some s'mores. Wish me luck! Guys, I'm freaking out, there are a bunch of cows right outside my house. Holy, holy shit. Please don't, please don't run away. Oh my god, it's a bull. day three. I actually woke up at 5.50, but then I went back to sleep, because even, like, 5.50 is, like, too early for me. Like, what am I gonna do? Kind of regret not getting up that early, but, um, I went to bed at 10.30 last night, which is extraordinarily early for me, and the night before, I went to bed at 11.30. But again, it's just, like, what am I gonna do to keep myself up late? My phone doesn't have any service. I'm not gonna do anything, so might as well go to bed. So I know yesterday I said that I was not going to leave the cabin for the rest of the trip, but I am definitely short on water. Um, 
So I'm going to go to the gas station and pick up some, probably like four gallons of water just to be safe. I totally uh, underestimated how much water I would need um, because you have to do dishes, you have to shower, um, you have to boil water for making food, and you have to drink water too, but I have water bottles. So I'm just going to run to the gas station, come back here, and attempt to make eggs and bacon. All right. Okay, so I just got four gallons of water, three large water bottles, and Pam cooking spray. I'm kind of salty, actually, that I let, that I had to leave my house, but like I said, there was just no way that I would be able to go with the amount of water that I had uh, if I wanted to clean the dishes, at least. So... Now I'm going back, it's 11.16 a.m. and I'm going to make my breakfast and shower and then I have no idea what else I'm gonna do. Mac and cheese is for dinner, that's all I know. Okay, talk to you later. I love being naked outside, I love it. I just, I don't even wanna go inside, I just wanna stay out here and, and air dry and just expose myself to, <laughs> to no one. To absolutely no one. Why is this so great? I feel like this is like peak humanity. This is how you live. You just like go outside in nature naked and at the same time like you've, you like I don't feel naked. I don't feel self-conscious or shameful. That's what I'm that's what I'm saying bro. This is how it was supposed to be. I feel the sunlight and the wind on every single part of my body right now. All right, I'm just I'm just gonna bull out here for a bit. Guys, I made breakfast. Yeah, I made them sunny side up. That one, you know, the yolk broke, got a little fucked up, but uh, that's okay. These turned out good. All right, I'm gonna enjoy this. So I just read some of 1984. I'm at like the peak disturbing part of it, by the way, like kind of chapters two and three of part three. Um. And I took a nap. I didn't want to take a nap because I like this whole going to bed early type of thing. I still think I will go to bed fairly early. Even if I, I mean, the latest I can imagine myself going to bed now is midnight. But again, what am I going to do? Read? If I read, then I'll instantly go to sleep, especially at night in bed. If I read in bed, I go to sleep, as I can, as you can see from what I did today. But luckily, it's only about 3.30. Still have quite a bit of day left. I've got about five hours of daylight left, so I'm thinking I might go for a walk. Just walk around, uh, and come back, read Answer to Job. As I was outside doing the dishes, I found myself very chatty. I was just thinking about um, faith and Christian faith and how none of it makes any sense. And when you read the Bible, which is what most Christians will advise you to do if you're having doubts and you want to be a believer, they'll say, read the Bible. But when you read the Bible, it simultaneously makes more and less sense. It really does seem like the the amount of Christians that exist are very quickly diminishing. Um, I mean, there is still a pretty substantial amount of Americans who uh, identify as Christians, but not a lot of people believe that the Bible is infallible and inerrant. That is a minority of people. And so I think because I don't really quite know where to come like, to the Bible, like, what kind of attitude to come at it with. You know, if I, should I read this as if it's real? I mean, that's what I've been trying to do. Because when I read it, you know, as a story, as a work of fiction, frankly, um, it wasn't really speaking to me, obviously. So I was like, okay, you know, over quarantine especially, I was like, you know what? I've been trying to study this way of life, this Christianity, um, and trying to determine if it's for me for a really long time now, over a year, 
I am just going to read this text as if it is true. And when I started to do that, my mind started to open up, but I am not all the way there yet. I am still tasked with the question that is not easily answered by any stretch of the imagination. How real is this book? Because I don't see it as necessarily something that is either totally real or not real at all. But unfortunately, most, you know, really, really hardcore Christians think that you either ha you have to either believe in all of it or none of it. That really stresses me out. As an Enneagram 5, it is very, very frustrating for me to have questions that aren't getting answered. And this particular question, which is on like, okay, I'm, I'm fairly... I'm not even fairly certain that God exists. I'm very strong in that belief, but if my life depended on it, I don't know what I would do or say. There was a story I was reading in uh, Crazy Love by Francis Chan. The, uh, he described this story about these two men who were being tortured brutally, and they apparently were, their torturers were like, deny the word of God and we'll stop torturing you. And they held out until the end. And then Francis Chan was like, imagine the feeling of then going to heaven. And it's like, and, and being like, wow, it was so worth it. I, I, unfortunately, you know, as much as I'm trying my best, I'm trying my absolute hardest to believe, to be a Bible believing Christian. When it comes down to it, my belief in heaven specifically heaven in the book of revelation i love the description of heaven in revelation 4 and 5 but do but i just i just read it and i think wow that's beautiful i know that i don't truly believe it because if i did i would be freaking out like i would i would be i would be overcome with passion and in a way i do feel like this is the most the thing that i am the most passionate about in my life right now there's a sense of unmistakable certainty that is missing and it's bothering me so much and I haven't stopped thinking about it. I haven't stopped trying to figure it out. I sort of accepted, you know, I realize that I'm never going to have the proof laid out in front of me. I'm never going to be adequately satisfied with, with any empirical evidence. So I suppose what I'm waiting on at this point is a feeling. You know, we don't give feelings enough credit. We talk about feelings in a very dismissive way, but what drives your belief in God if it's not a feeling? Answer that. If what what it what is it? Because you know most Christians I know will admit that it can't be proven. I mean, it can't be proven, or else everyone would believe in God, right? In fact, there are so many things on Earth. Imp that seem to contradict the um, inerrancy of the Bible. There's actually quite a bit, actually. Um, the big one is, the th the, is evolution, the theory of evolution, that is pretty universally accepted at this point. I mean, but there's other things, like, you know, in the Book of Numbers, there's a part where a donkey starts speaking. Do I need to believe that that actually happened to have, to have a full faith? In God, I don't know how to read the Bible. If, if I read the Bible from the perspective of God's word, how can I know if God wanted me to take it literally? Or if he wanted me to take some things as a metaphor? I don't know. I don't know. And I can think about it and 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 study it and read it as I've been doing. And I don't have any clarity, and it's getting really frustrating. I feel like my entire life is just going to be a battle. And like when I pray, I pray as if he's real too. I pray as if the God of the Bible is real and listening. I don't let my skepticism get in the way of my prayer, even if I'm... It feels like I'm faking it. It feels like I'm faking it. It still does. Like, I mean, I ask God, like, God, like, fill me with your Holy Spirit. Whatever that means, like, change my heart, change my ways, change, give me a new heart, renew me, restore me, redeem me, 
make it so that I am utterly and completely obsessed with you and can fully surrender to you. And even when I do pray, I say, God, I surrender. I'm verbally surrendering. I'm verbally repenting. I don't know if it's on me or if it's on God at this point. If there are any Bible-believing Christians that have struggled with this, please let me know. I'm desperate for fellowship. I'm desperate to have, you know, friends who are further along in their faith because this is really hard. Because, you know, I can try to follow the rules. I can try to, you know, make my faith into, like, this checklist of, like, don't do this, don't do this, don't do this. Um, but, I mean, we all know that that's not what a relationship with God is supposed to look like. I hope I'm struck with undeniable, transformative, euphoric clarity before God calls me to be with him. Okay, I'm gonna go make a bonfire. Uh, 9.30 a.m. and I need to be out of this cabin in an hour and a half, which means that I'm about to take my final outdoor shower for the indefinite future. I don't think this one will be quite as pleasant because it's actually quite cool out. It rained last night and uh, it's a little bit wet and, and like I said, cool out. Hello. Um, but yep, yeah, after that I'm going to go, well once I'm ready to head out, I'll take my bags up to my car and I will get breakfast in Galena and hang out in Galena for a while and then I'll be heading home. It's a three hour drive. All right, be right back. That was the most difficult shower I've ever taken in my life. It's like 60 degrees outside and the water was freezing cold. Um, but I did it. I'm. I'm clean, or as clean as I could have gotten, because it was pretty rushed. Now I'm, I just gotta pack everything and get dressed, of course. And I have an hour and 15 minutes. That should be enough time. And man, I really am good at underestimating how much water I need, because I ended up having enough, but like now, I am completely out of water. I mean, I, I was thinking last night, I made myself a cup of tea, which meant that I had two more dishes to clean. And I was like, oh man, like, I gotta clean these two dishes, I gotta shower. I had enough, I had enough water, thankfully. But, really, really close. <laughs> Explosion. So, and then a half pound of ch 
chocolate walnut. That's, those are both for my mother. Uh, it's her birthday tomorrow. She likes fudge. Um, and then I got four books from that antique shop. Um, they are, all four of them are, like, pretty philosophy 101 type of works. Like, things that everyone who says that they're into philosophy should have in their bookshelf. And they're the ones that I don't have. So, well, except one of them. I got Introducing Foucault, which is like, it's, it's like an illustrated, um, sort of simplified version of who, fo who Foucault was and what influenced him and things like that. That's what it looks like on the inside. It's basically Foucault simplified. Then I got um, Plato's Republic. Um, I've read a few uh, excerpts from the Republic. Um, again, in my intro to philosophy class, but I just decided, you know, I should have the whole book. Um, the only other work I have by Plato is the five dialogues, so this was definitely something, this was, if I was going to leave with one book, it probably would have been this one. And then I have, um, an introduction to Descartes, Descartes' meditations, um, and it is essentially the meditations themselves and also uh, like an explanation of what he was arguing and I looked inside and there are some helpful figures in here and then I got um, Aquinas on nature and grace he doesn't really have a title but that's what it looks like on the side it you know same thing like if I'm gonna say that I'm into philosophy and theology which I am I need to get something by Thomas Aquinas. This was from the religious section of the uh, library, um, and there were so many other books in that section that I wanted, but again, I was like, if I'm going to get one book from the religious session, it might as well be by St. Thomas Aquinas. So yeah, those are the books that I got, and I, like I said, I really wanted to, there were a lot of other books that I wanted to get, but I decided it would probably be best to stop at four, so yeah.